Hi, you guys. Okay, so today we're going to talk about molecular formula. So make sure that you have your notes. You have your pencil with a good eraser, highlighter. Make sure you have your calculator as well as your periodic table. Okay? All right. So let's get started on molecular formula. So last time I spoke to you about empirical formula, and empirical formula is the smallest ratio of subscripts that you have. But molecular formula is very similar to an empirical formula, but sometimes the smallest ratio of a subscript is not the true formula of the molecule. Instead, the true form formula of the molecule has subscripts that are not reduced. For example, you have benzene right here. And this is how benzene looks. Okay, so this is how benzene looks like. So benzene is C6H6. You've got carbon 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Six carbons there with six hydrogens. Clearly, we can reduce that into the smallest ratio of subscripts, and it would be carbon and hydrogen, and that's it. But notice that this formula here is very different from the actual molecule of benzene. So that's what a molecular formula is, is that it isn't necessarily the smallest um, ratio of subscript, and usually the molecular formula is the true formula that is out there. Okay? So, um, so while this is an empirical formula right here, this is not the formula of benzene. Okay? So, and in order to determine how we get molecular formula right here, you would, in order to determine the molecular formula, you must add one more step to the empirical formula. So that's super important that there is one more step that you have to do. And that one more step is, basically you're just multiplying, you multiply, um, the number with the empirical formula. Okay? Empirical formula and um, formula. And I'll show you that in a second. So we've got a practice problem here. We've got one that's already done. A hydrocarbon is 82.66% carbon, and the remainder is hydrogen. Well, it's a hydrocarbon, so you know that it is hydrogen, and carbon. You know that off, off the very top, off the bat. And usually, sometimes a hydrocarbon will have an oxygen. If that is the case, then we will somehow give you the indication oxygen is present, and um, we'll give you more information on that. But clearly, this is 82.66. So your total sample, in this case, is going to be about equal to 100%. Okay, since we have 82.66, it's not 10, it's not 10, it's not 20 or 50, but we're talking about percentages, so it's going to be 100%. Okay, and since it is just carbon and hydrogen, you've got carbon that is about 82.66 grams of it, so 100 minus 82.66 grams would give you 17.34 grams of hydrogen. So we've got that. You want to write carbon and hydrogen up here. So after we figure out the mass, uh, how much, how much of uh, carbon and hydrogen we have, we are going to then divide by the molar mass of each of the elements. So you're going to divide by the atomic mass of carbon, which is 12.01. So it's 82.66 divided by 12.01, and then of course this is 17. 3, 4 divided by 1.01 or 0, 0, 0, 0.08. Okay, and you get a certain number here. Now you're going to take this number right here and you're going to divide by whichever is the smallest number. So all the other numbers you're going to divide by it. In this case, the smallest number, and I'll put that here, the smallest value. Okay, the smallest value. So in this case, the smallest value that you have is 6.88. So you're going to divide 6.88 divided by 6.88. And that is, of course, going to give you 1. And then 17.17 .17 divided by 6.88 
would give you about 2.5. Again, this is a decimal number that you have. <clears throat> so it's not, we want to make this a whole number subscript. So we are going to multiply this by a number, by the number 2. So if we multiply by the number 2 on both sides, because you must do what you did to one side as well as to the other, that'll give you, for carbon now, you will have two carbon atoms, and for hydrogen, you should have five um, hydrogen atoms. So this is your empirical formula right here, C2H5. And you are going to then, using your periodic table, you should find the molar mass of your empirical. So this is really important that you understand this, the C2H5 is your empirical value. And when you find the molar mass of your empirical value, you get a, um, your value will, will be in grams per mole right here, grams per mole. And every single time you have a molecular formula problem, you will always be given the actual molar mass. And it will be stated somehow, somewhere in the problem, the actual molar mass. Um, of your of your molecular formula. So you're going to take your actual molar mass that you have right here and you're going to divide by the empirical molar mass that you have and you are going to get a number, usually a whole number. If it's not a whole number and it happens to be a number with a decimal by it, then you would follow the same rules that you did over here. You would multiply it by either two, by three, by four to make it a whole number subscript, okay? So now that we have this number two, this number two is actually used to multiply throughout the entire molecular, um, throughout the mole entire molecular empirical formula, sorry, not molecular. So you're gonna take your molecular formula, I made a mistake there, uh, two H five, and you're going to take this number and you're going to multiply with your empirical formula that you have. So your new molecular formula should be C4H10. Okay? So this will be a new molecular formula. So this is an example that's been done for you. Let's go ahead and do one together now. So we've got here nicotine contains 74.0% of carbon. 8.7% of hydrogen, and 17.3% of nitrogen. Um, if the molar mass is 162.1 grams per mole, what is the molecular formula? Okay, so we're going to get started. Um, I have here carbon. Okay, I've got hydrogen, and I've got nicotine. Okay, so for carbon, I've got 74 Point zero grams, um, 8.7 grams, and then 17.3 grams. And I'm going to take each one and I'm going to divide it by its molar mass again. This is the step that we are at right now. We're going to divide by the molar mass. So I'm going to take this number, divide by 12.01. Two decimal places from your periodic table is just fine. So hydrogen's 1.01 <clears throat> using your periodic table. And nitrogen is 14.01 using your periodic table that you have, okay? So in case you are wondering where I got this number, then looking at my periodic table here, this is where I am getting my numbers. So I've got nitrogen is 14.01 right there, okay? So that, those are the numbers, that's where I'm getting it, okay? So once you... Put this into the calculator. My carbon will be 6.162. My hydrogen will be 8.614. And my nitrogen will be 1.235. Keep in mind that if you have a number in the very front, a, um, you know, before the decimal, then you really just need three decimal places. If you happen to have a zero in the ones place, then you would need four decimal places or four numbers to actually make sure that you've gotten the right number. You've pulled enough numbers um, to not make a rounding error. So now we're going to divide by the smallest ratio, and that is 1.235. And we're going to divide everything by that number, okay? 1.235. When we do, 
you get a number, and that number is, for carbon, it's going to be 5, for hydrogen, it's going to be 7, and for nitrogen, it is, of course, 1. This is the empirical formula that we have. So our empirical formula is C5, H7, and then 1 nitrogen. Now, using your periodic table again, you are going to find the molar mass for your empirical. So this is your empirical. formula and you're going to find the molar mass of this and when you do 01 plus 7.101 again you're using your periodic table to find this it should come out to be 81.1 it's a, um, the number comes out to be 81.129 so I'm going to go ahead and round this off to two decimal places because we always round our molar mass to two decimal places, so it'd be 81.13 grams per mole, okay? Now, using this, this is our molar mass for our empirical formula. I have been given in this problem, if you look at it, I have been given the molar mass of nicotine is 162.1 grams per mole. So I'm gonna take that value 162.1, this is my um, molar mass for my molecular formula, okay? And I'm going to take this and I'm going to divide it by 81.13. And this is my uh, molar mass for my empirical formula. And when I do, I will get a number. It's a whole number ratio. If this number happens to be something uh, um, with, let's say if it was 2.5, then I would simply take this number to make it a whole number. I would then multiply it by 2 to make sure that uh, my subscripts are a whole number. But in our case, it's not. So I don't have to do anything to this number. It is 2. So that means that I am going to take my empirical value, C, which is 2, um, I'm going to take this number, okay, and I'm going to multiply by 2 my empirical formula. And that should give me C, 10, H, 14, N, 2. This is my molecular formula. So my molecular formula, and I'm going to write it right here, For nicotine is C ten H fourteen N two. Okay, so what is the molecular formula? It's right here, my molecular formula. Okay, so this is how we actually calculate the uh, um, molecular formula um, in using our empirical formula values. Okay, I hope this helped you guys. Have a good one. See you later.